Well, hello and welcome everyone. Gotchaholic here, and today we'll be discussing more Higurashi Go. Woo! Murder! Now, it's come to my attention that a lot of my subscribers and a lot of other YouTubers actually have come to a very similar conclusion as myself. Now, I've always danced around the idea that Reno was involved somehow with the upcoming twist, right? After all, we're all expecting to be trolled one way or another. However, Rena is a fan favorite. She's the mascot of Higurashi, and not gonna lie, she's also my favorite character. So I always had in the back of my mind, well, perhaps I'm paying extra attention to her simply because she's my favorite character, and she's not as suspicious as, um, you know, I think she is. Until I realize, like, everyone else also suspects her. It's like, alright, well, I think it's a good opportunity to jump back into the previous episodes of Higurashi and actually examine just what it is about Rena that makes her so suspicious. And as we've all come to realize, if she really is involved with the twist, is it really under an antagonistic persona? Or could she perhaps be the hero of Higurashi? Now, as it turns out, this first club activity is actually of utmost importance because this is when Sachiko induces a syndrome in Rena. Whether Sachiko is doing this through feathering or through that missing syringe is undeterminable. However, up to this point, Rena has been behaving completely normal. She hasn't made any ominous expressions, she hasn't shared cryptic dialogue, she's still taking Keiichi to the junkyard, she's still spending all her time with Keiichi, and um, in coordinates to the original arc one, it's a great reference point. Ultimately, this is normal Rena. Look, even here, she's playing games with the club, everything's normal, just peachy dandy Higurashi days, right? Slice of life. When in reality, we know nothing is as it seems. Satoko has already killed Rika at this point, and this is pretty much the first true reset for Rika. Considering when Satoko first met Featherine, she just automatically reset, so we pretty much won't count that. That's the hidden arc that I already predicted earlier in another video, but it doesn't matter. So check this out. While the show in itself wants you to focus on Satoko, if you pay attention to Rena in this moment, you'll notice something very strange. Rena! Mm -hmm. huh? Sorry, I didn't realize how tired I was getting. Too much fun, I guess. <laughs> you okay? <clears throat> I'm gonna stop at the nurse's office before I leave. But can't help Kun. No need to worry about that. We'll go deal with him whenever you're feeling better. Now, it's obvious by Satoko's reaction here. She's definitely responsible, but she still kind of seems like she doesn't fully understand what she's doing. Which makes sense if this is the first loop that she truly reset Rika into. She's still feeling out her abilities. We know in later episodes, you know, around 16, 17, and 18, Satoko gets crazy abilities. Like, she can willfully change events. It seems like she can just inflict the syndrome on people whenever. Now, whether this is through feathering or she's just, you know, crazy setting traps and getting a hold of that missing injection. It's really hard to say the limitations of her abilities. And therefore, I just simply won't speculate. However, as you can tell right after this event, Rena is already acting much stranger. She's already daunted in ominous expression when Keiichi showed up, which actually seems like he genuinely surprised her. Now, upon your first viewing, even as an OG watcher, you kind of write off a lot of Rena's bizarre behavior because you know that it's accounted for. Keiichi is actually suffering the syndrome, and he will eventually kill her and Mion. However, upon, you know, watching this a second time, we know this is not the case. We know that Satoko is responsible for this, and that Rena is actually suffering symptoms of the syndrome. But then that begs the question, what is it that Satoko is hoping to achieve here? Why isn't Rena attacking Rika? And just because Rena has the syndrome here does not mean that she doesn't know what's going on. Armed with hatchets and pickaxes, the assailants brutally attacked and murdered the victim before using an axe to sever his head and limbs. <gasps> <gasps> It's just a hallucination. Okay, Rena literally tried to kill Keiichi there. She wanted him dead. So, although it seems like she sustains a syndrome for a long time, 
I feel like given the opportunity, she would have acted much quicker. Now, Rana attempting to kill Keiichi there is actually very important because it confirms that we're not tethered to the date of the festival and it confirms that there's two types of syndromes. So what I mean by this is, though the first three arcs seem like a toss-up in terms of how the syndrome's behaving at first glance, we know for sure that the five consecutive deaths Rika experiences near the, you know, later part of the show is definitely because of Sotko. And those culprits were triggered before the festival, just like Rena was right here. It's actually quite impressive how Rena is able to control herself despite having the syndrome here. In fact, this is exactly how she acts in the first arc when she wasn't induced by the syndrome. Yes, Rena is inherently strange, but she's still behaving like normal Rena here. Though Keiichi's perspective is clearly much different. Now, just to clarify what I meant by two types of syndromes earlier, we have the reverse culprit that's being affected by Sachiko, and then we have the original culprit from that arc. Two variant types of the syndromes, only the reverse culprits seem to target Rika. Hence why Shion targeted the great families in arc 2 and not Rika. While Mion was the one that we, you know, can assume killed Rika. And Mion's the reverse culprit. But this is Sachiko's first loop, so perhaps she doesn't know how to get her culprits to target people yet. And yet... Something doesn't feel right. What's the matter? No, everything's fine. <sighs> I believe it's a combination of Rena having the syndrome and the fact that she's remembering the original Arc 1, just like Keiichi is, um, that's leading her to target him. And she's forming her own plan entirely. Look at this. Look at that. Ha! Huh, guilty. Don't trust a hoe, never trust a hoe, won't trust a hoe, won't trust me. She wants to touch me, whoa, she wants to love me, whoa, she'll never leave me, no. And I don't trust this hoe, don't trust this hoe, she suspects Satsuko and Keiichi. Alright, well enough of that nonsense. Alright, let's pick up the pace a little bit. So ultimately the first eight minutes of this video is laying the framework for the possibility that Rena is up to way more than the show has led on to this point. Cause we can even look at the cover art that was released, we see Rena holding Rika's hand and we see Satsuko on the other side of it. Satsuko is definitely, you know, the antagonist. But there's just so much mystery and speculation revolved around Rena, and there's honestly a lot of evidence suggesting that she is remembering previous timelines, and I will show it to you. So with that, no more fucking around. You're either on the Rena train or you're off. Let's go. Higurashi go. So there's actually evidence in the first encounter that we see Keiichi have with the photographer, because guess who's with him? Rena. And unlike most characters who represent the reader in horror, Keiichi's not completely stupid. In fact, Keiichi straight calls him out. Check it. But I feel like there might be a lot more going on. Wow! Damn, this kid is sharp! I knew it! So what's the deal? The bird watching is a front. He's in Hinamizawa looking for a different kind of beauty. An eligible young lady. Huh? But he's kind of an awkward guy, so I guess it's not working out so good. And sometimes people from the village will ask him to take pictures for them. Wait, that's it? I feel bad. I mean, I was thinking something way more sinister. Huh? Sinister how? Not sure. It just feels like he's hiding a lot. As we can see, Mion reacts quite frazzled, actually, to Keiichi. She's like, no way. There's even direct emphasis on Mion laughing over it. However, Rena reacts much different. Despite suffering the syndrome, she knows what Tomotake's presence truly means. Please, Keiichi! I don't know where you... Stick with me. Uh, right. Uh... Uh... Now, let's go. So again, if Satoko is responsible for Rena having the syndrome, why doesn't Rena target Rika, like every other culprit Satoko is affected? Mion, Oishi, 
the four consecutive culprits that kill Rika later in the show, the only ones that target Keiichi are Rena and Tepe. Which bridges into the hallucination theory, or multiple loopers. Maybe Feathering wants Keiichi, and so there's like an ulterior motive with Sachiko, which explains why Keiichi and Rika are the only ones targeted, because Sachiko has her grudge against Rika. But if Feathering wants Keiichi, you think she would, you know, have him, given her status. If you actually know her character, it doesn't really make sense. Unless Rena actually did kill Rika in this loop. And Sachiko let herself die alongside her to cover up her, you know, responsibility. Meanwhile, Ren actually remembers this, but she isn't entirely sure about Sachiko, because Sachiko, you know, covered herself up. And there's even evidence to suggest that Mio knows what's going on too, which goes into the multiple loopers theory again. Or it could be something simple, like Rena is just obsessed with Keiichi. Um, little known fact, she actually does love him. Um, if you know about the mantra... If you know that, remember her confession? She straight tells him she loves him. Now, aside from the mantra, I spent a lot of time talking about a lot of this in previous videos, so we're going to save the speculation for later. I'm sure these questions we're asking will be answered in the next episode, episode 22. In case you're wondering, this video came out between episodes 21 leading into 22. So, but one thing is for certain. Unless Rena actually did kill Rika and Sachiko at the end of this, then Sachiko literally has no motives to target Rena with the syndrome. This would provide no merits for Sachiko whatsoever. And it's also weird that she's targeting Keiichi, as I have said plenty of times. But ultimately, I'm pretty sure Rena has some type of insight, or, you know, she is remembering timelines just like Keiichi is. However, She's also induced by the syndrome, and it's a combination of this that's really driving her behavior. Hence why she's self-aware of the syndrome and connects it to when she left the village. Let me elaborate. Right before she kills Keiichi, she states how she thought she was forgiven, but she's been cursed again and it's too late, which is her being self-aware of the syndrome. And then when she said she thought she was forgiven, she's talking about when she left Hinamizawa and suffered the syndrome. But then when she returns to Hinamizawa, she calms down. A very particular rule that Rena is realizing, and how the fuck did she figure that out? Huge red flag. And even Rena's dialogue about her father is very similar to an off canon arc, as if she might be remembering that too. And then check out this dialogue. The dub isn't out yet, so. <laughs> I remember it all, and it makes no sense. Even though I saw it all happen, I just don't I get just it. I just don't get it. Yeah, me neither, buddy. Let's jump back into arc one for just a moment. Now, we're only spending so much time in arc one because this is Rena's featured arc. Likewise, I'll make another video about Mion later, which will detail a lot more of arc two. But one more important detail about arc one, Rena is the last one seen around the photographer and the nurse. And if you remember in her dialogue to Keiichi, she actually states that he will be the one to die and she'll be the one to disappear. Meaning she already knows Tomotake and Takano were not affected by Oriyashiro's curse. Because she fucking killed them. Because she fucking remembers that they're the antagonists. Because she remembers previous timelines. There's just so much evidence, come on. Don't talk to me like that, you psychotic fucking twerp. Don't worry, we're getting at arc one, and I'm going to show you direct evidence right now that Rena suspects what Sachiko is up to. In episode five, pay attention. <sighs> now that I've eaten, all I want to do is take a nap. So hey, Kay, you always eat all your foods at lunch, right? Like not a single grain of rice left? Well, someone took the time to make it for me. It wouldn't be right to waste it. It's kind of funny. You come off as intense and a bit of a loner. But you're so considerate. You're a stand-up guy. I know, right? He can look kind of scary, well, but he's a real sweetheart on the inside. Now it's starting to feel like you're making fun of me. I'm not. I'm being serious. What I'm saying is there's more to you than what you see at first glance. So what did you see at first glance that was so bad? Miss Sonazaki, <laughs> Mr. Maibara, we are in class. Honestly. Miss Sonazaki, notes? Yes, ma'am. Never judge a book by its cover, you know? 
Sometimes a person is the total opposite of how they seem. Yeah? What about it? Seems like you're going somewhere with this. Up until a little while ago, Satoko was a super sweet, needy girl. Sweet and needy? That goblin? I can't even imagine what that would have been like. Though I will say there's more to Rika than the cute face. Whenever I look at her, I can't help thinking she's going to be a drop-dead gorgeous woman when she grows up. Don't you think? Don't you? And even if she acts like she's not, Mion's definitely a girly girl at heart. Okay, so how much did she pay you to give me this speech? It's because she's so dedicated to leading our club. She wants us all to see her as someone we can follow. But when you get past that, she's a cute girl on the inside. <laughs> but she'll always do her best to hide it, so don't forget, alright, Keichi? Got it. Now what about you? Huh? About me? I shouldn't judge folks based on appearance, right? So how does that apply to you, Dana? <laughs> I need to know how I seem to you. So how do I seem? So how? How does Rena Ryugu seem to me? <laughs> she can take the joke a bit far sometimes, but she still has a kind heart. I guess basically she's everything you could want in a girl. Really? Honestly? Well, thanks. That's really sweet. But if you're just the opposite... You have to admit, the possibility is there, and I don't want to hear otherwise. Now, just to set the stage for arc 2, this is right when Rika disappears. And I believe Satko inflicted Mion with the syndrome this time, and Mion has already killed Rika, drowning her in the septic. So is Satko blaming Keiichi to dissuade her own involvement? Or is she genuinely curious? Uh, yeah, we talked a little before you showed up, but then she was gone. Actually, uh, I think I saw her behind the school with someone. Huh? So, during this conversation, Mion brings up that she saw Rika talking to a construction worker, and with hindsight, we know Mion sees construction workers on the camera before she confronts Sotiko, which is during the scene when she pulls out that strange gun that we never see again. So if Sotiko was the only antagonist, then what's going on here? Sotiko is the true antagonist, right? She's facilitating this, right? She's causing this, right? Then why does it seem like she has no fucking idea what's going on? And why does Rena seem so weird in the next scene? Especially considering the scene is revolved around Satoshi, who honestly is someone I've not talked about too much on this channel, which is a damn shame. So let's just check this scene out. Look me in the eyes and tell me, to my face, that Rena isn't up to anything. Especially if you've seen the original, Rena should be rampaging. However, Honestly, I could go layers and layers in with a lot of these observations, but we'll just stick with the generic front. This shit's weird. Considering Rena identified the culprit in the original, and considering it was her and Oishi who busted into the Sonazaki residence in the original, I think Rena is the reason why Mion's gun was missing. I think she played a huge part in why Satoko doesn't know what's going on, especially Arc 2. And ultimately, I think Rena's been slowly figuring out just what it is that Satoko's up to. I spent a lot of time talking about arcs 2 and 3 in previous videos, and honestly a bit of time in arc 1 though it was pretty early in the series, so I wasn't as informed as I am now, but... The point is, there's a bit more cryptic dialogue that Rena shares, during arc 3 specifically. Though it's all pretty much adding up to the same conclusion. Rena knows what's going on. And I believe... She's going to be the one that will help Rika restore sanity to this fucking story. This is why Ren is on the cover art, holding Rika's hand. Even this scene right here, it seems like Rena isn't giving up on Keiichi, just like he didn't give up on her when she was rampaging with the syndrome at the end of season one. And she warns him he's in a dream. How much more evidence do you want before you believe me? This bitch knows what the fuck is going on. And she is the goddamn hero of Higurashi. Alright everyone, that pretty much wraps up today's topic. Ultimately, I'm calling it right now. Rena is the hidden hero of Higurashi. You'll see. You'll all see. Alright, now before we wrap up the video, I just want to take the time to say thank you everyone who watches my channel and especially those subscribed. I'm clearly doing this for fun, my non-existent YouTube channel makes me nothing. 
But this is very fun. I love the show. I love theorizing, and I was not expecting my community to grow and accumulate the way they did. I really appreciate all you guys. It's been a lot of fun. At least I'm having a lot of fun. Best believe you can expect mo content. And I'd like to give a shout out to someone who I'd like to consider a friend. Shouts out to Wade Willis, my man. He also covers Higurashi and a lot more anime than I do. <laughs> If you're looking for a more traditional YouTuber like that does reactions, reviews, and episodic live streams, he's the one to go to. And like myself, he's got a lot of great theories and a very good mind to breaking down these types of shows. And I'm pretty sure he's covering a lot of anime that you'd probably like, so go check him out. Wade Willis. And with that, I wish y'all a great rest of your days. Later. See you in long time!